Mid Journey V5 is here and it's super powerful. Here's everything you need to know about this newest model. Hello humans, my name is Keio Air Overload and Mid Journey V5 is finally here after months of waiting. So, how is it? Well, if I had to describe this newest model simply, I would show you this example. So this right here is the community feed. These are all the images created by people using Mid Journey. And you can see that most of these images are absolutely beautiful, they're gorgeous. They have a very digital painting style to it, and they are overall very, very stylized. However, if I now click on new, you see that the feeling is a little different. You see that the images are very, very detailed, but you definitely see a lot more photorealistic images. And that is because most of these images are made with the newest V5 model. And that is pretty much how I can sum up Mid Journey V5. It is very detailed and very photorealistic. Now keep in mind, however, that this V5 version is only an alpha test. This is not the final model. This current V5 alpha model is very unopinionated compared to the V3 and V4 model, meaning that basically it provides a more diverse output, but at the same time, you don't really get that mid journey feel to it, that mid journey aesthetic that the V3 or V4 had. So, to give you a practical example, if in mid journey V4 I were to use a very simple prompt like beautiful woman, well, I would get images like these which are very aesthetic and have that little mid-journey feel. They have that little digital painting. You can definitely tell that this is not a photo. However, if now I use the exact same prompt with mid-journey v5, you would get images like these, which are really super photorealistic and super precise, because if you were to show one of those images, no one would be able to tell the difference between a real photo and one of those generation. So yes, it is pretty impressive. Now one thing that you might have noticed is that these images seem very, very high quality and very detailed, almost as if they are of high resolution compared to the previous V4 version. And that is because, well, they are. Because now all the images generated with the V5 model have twice the resolution of the previous V4 images. And also one big difference is that compared to the V4 model, images made with the V5 are already upscaled, meaning that what you see is what you get. And that means that if now I click on the upscale button, I get basically the image instantly. I don't need to wait for the image to upscale, don't need the image to regenerate again. The image that you see generated right here is already the final version which in a way is really really cool because very often when you lack a base image in the v4 version and you upscale it, sometimes the upscaled image does not exactly look like the base image, which can be very frustrating if you like the base image, but in the end you end up not enjoying the result of the upscaled image. So now with the v5 model you don't have this problem anymore. However, that also means that the image generation is now way slower. So now technically your fast time is now being used used faster. So if you are someone who generates a lot of images, but don't necessarily end up upscaling a lot of them, you might end up using your fast time a little bit quicker. So keep that in mind. So then, how is the V5 Alpha compares with the same prompt to the V4? Well, as I said earlier, it's basically more detailed, more precise, more photorealistic, but at the same time, when you compare to the V4, you're definitely losing that mid-journey aesthetic that made the mid-journey model so special. Now again, I know this is a V5 Alpha version. This is a special model that doesn't have that mid-journey feel to it. This is just an Alpha after all. But personally, I really enjoy the mid-journey feel that you get in the previous V4 models. Because when you compare the images side by side with the previous model, you can easily tell which model is which. For example, like this is the V4 and this is the V5. And although obviously this looks really really good, don't get me wrong, I I definitely personally prefer these kinds of results, and it's usually not very difficult to see which images were generated with which model. The V5 images are basically a little bit more precise, a bit more finer, but also lack a little bit of creativity compared to the V4. Now you can still get very stylized images, like for example this is the V5 and this is the V4, so definitely the exact same style but just a little bit more precise. But most of the time if you try to get the same images from V4 inside V5, you're really not gonna get that. Now one thing that the V5 is definitely better at is generating anime images, like for example this is V4 and this is V5. I mean, this looks really, really good. This is supposed to be a Blu-ray still image from a Ghibli movie, and as you can see here, the result is absolutely incredible. And here's another example. There are so much details in these images, you could swear that these are really taken from a Ghibli movie. This is really incredible. 
I mean, look at the detail in the map here. So yeah, this is definitely super impressive. And also another thing that the V5 is definitely better at are hands. Because yes, most of the time that you generate hands, they look basically perfect. And if you compare to the V4, the difference is huge. I mean, this is night and day. And I didn't even cherry pick these results because these images were generated one after the other. So yeah, as I said, most of the time you will generate very good hands using the V5. Now obviously it's not perfect, there are still some cases where the hand is a little, you know, weird, with sometimes a little extra finger here and there, but most of the generation done with the V5, when it comes to hands, are really, really good. So now we are really one step closer to a time where hands will be generated perfectly, and that's really exciting. Now although I said that the V5 images are a little less interesting compared to the V4 with the same prompt, there is actually a reason for that, and that is because now the prompting with the V5 has changed. Now it is recommended to write your prompt in the form of a sentence instead of a list. They recommend to try to write this the same way you learned at school. They even give you an example, so now you should write something like an astronaut floating in outer space instead of something like astronaut comma floating comma outer space, which is something that you would do for the previous versions. Here for example I wrote a sentence of a mysterious AI overlord watching over the world and it gave me exactly this, a very mysterious humanoid-like AI overlord, however with the same example with the same prompt but now written in the old way I get something like this, which is definitely a little bit more human and a bit less like an AI overlord. So yes, now the prompting style definitely matters way more, which in in a way makes this a little bit easier to use for newcomers, because you don't need to know all the metas, all the most popular keywords to get better results. You can just simply write a sentence of what you want to see to get good results. Now unfortunately that also means that you cannot just put one word sentence, you cannot simply use one single word in your prompt and accept something decent, you definitely need to use a longer prompt to get better more interesting images. And since we are on the topic on how we can make the images better, one thing that I definitely recommend you to use is the stylized argument. Because if like me you want something a little bit more stylized and a bit more interesting and less boring, I highly recommend that you use a thousand for the stylized parameter. It will make your images look way better. Like for example these are images with a stylized at zero, they look good but kinda a little boring, almost like they're from an old video game. And these are images with the exact same prompt but with a thousand for the stylized parameter which in my opinion makes these images way better than these ones. Now obviously this is only my opinion, but I definitely prefer these images instead of these ones. Now another very cool option that they added is the ability to create images of any aspect ratio. And this is fantastic, because now you can generate images of any ratio that you want. So for example, here's a practical application of that. Let's say for example that you have a website and you want an image for your banner. In Midjourney you can write something like banner for an e-commerce website for example. And then for the aspect ratio, you're gonna choose something like a thousand by one. And you get something like this, which you can use for your website or anything else. So I think that this feature is definitely very, very powerful because being able to generate images in any format, in any size that you want, can be really, really useful for a lot of you. I mean, you can use this to generate images for your website, for your app, for a portfolio, anything that you want. So yeah, that's really, really cool. So another option they introduced back are image weights. So when you use an image as a reference, you can increase its influence by using the dash dash IW and then a value between 0.2 and 2.0. And basically what that means is that this value, the higher it is, the more it's gonna rely on the information provided in the image rather than the prompt. So in this example, I simply use Monkey D. Luffy from One Piece smiling standing on a pirate boat ready to fight with an image weight of 2, meaning that it will rely more on the image provided than the prompt. And as you can see, indeed we do have the character, but when you look at the background, we don't really see a pirate boat. We do see some ropes, we do see the sea, but nothing that makes us say that we are on a pirate boat. However, now, with the exact same prompt and an image weight of 0.5, it still took information from our base image. However, when you look at the background, now we are definitely standing on something that looks like a pirate ship, or at least a ship because now it's giving a little bit more importance to the prompt instead of the image. So this is definitely a very cool feature to get more control out of your generation. Now we also still have the tile argument that you can use to create seamless styling. If you want for example to create textures for a video game, you can come here and for example type something like 
rough metal texture with rust and then use the dash dash style argument and you get something like this. So now if I upscale for example the first one and if for example I want to check that it is indeed a seamless style, I can use a website called Seamless Texture Checker which is really super super useful. And if you want to try it out the link for it will be in the description down below. So I'm just gonna come here and drag it onto the website and as you can see indeed we have a perfect seamless texture. And you can zoom it in and out and as you can see you don't see any seams between the texture. So again if for example you are a video game maker and you need to create textures this is maybe something that you want to try. And finally, they also improved the remix feature to make it more accurate and more powerful. And the remix picture is kind of like the image to image option in Stable Diffusion. So for example, if I type something like photo of a beautiful woman standing near an old house in Louisiana in the 70s smiling with an ice cream in the left hand, I get some very cool, very beautiful images, very photorealistic, not perfect but still pretty good. And now if I go in settings and I make sure that the remix mode is enabled, if I click on one of those variation button, I can change the prompt into something else. So for example, I would like maybe a beautiful old woman. So if I click submit, I get something like this, which again, if you compare it to the previous image, are very very similar, but this time instead of having a young woman, it is an old woman instead. So obviously compared to Stable Diffusion, it's not as precise, since you can just impaint or mask the subject that you want to change, but if you want to have a similar style of image and just change a few details, it's a pretty interesting option. And there you have it folks, now you know pretty much everything there is to know about the newest Midjourney V5 model. Now if I were to personally give my opinion on this newest model, I would say that I personally prefer the V4 one. I do enjoy the aesthetic, I do enjoy the style, because I'm personally just not a big fan of photorealistic images. But obviously this is just an alpha model, we won't get a more opinionated model later, but in any case it's still the most powerful mid-journey model to date. And I really think that a lot of you will enjoy using it. So definitely try it out if you can, because it's really a very powerful tool. And there you have it folks, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, thank you also to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome, you are the people who support me so I can make these videos possible, so thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!